About a year ago, maybe 18 months, I built a bog filter for this old concrete stock trough pond. This is a very simple pond. It has a little submersible pump that consumes 20 watts of power per hour. It pumps the water into a 200 litre bog filter and then the water returns to the pond. There's no UV lights or additives and I haven't cleaned the filter or the pump. I've basically just left it for the past year. But this pond perfectly shows what my channel's all about, low maintenance ponds that are cheap and easy to maintain. So if you don't already know me, my name is Kev, and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain a pond without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. So today I'd like to share with you how this pond and the filter were made. There's lots of different ways to filter water, but utilising a bog filter and natural processes is hands down my personal favourite. It gives me crystal clear water every time. I also have countless emails and comments from people all over the world who have achieved the same results. It's low cost, easy to DIY, and you can scale it to suit any type of pond. But let's take a look at how this particular system was constructed so you can build your own and achieve clean, clear, healthy water. To start with, I added in a substrate to half the pond. This pond has rainbow fish and I wanted plenty of plant cover to protect them from birds, but also to encourage them to breed and so the babies have plenty of room to hide. The substrate gives me something to plant the plants into. It also has a role in filtering the water, but we'll talk more on that later. I often add rock, pebble and plants to my ponds, and I've also started to experiment with dirt and sand. I like to have plants in my ponds, but it's not a requirement for clean, clear, healthy water, although they do help consume nutrients. For the substrate, I'm using a local rock called scoria, which is commonly used in drainage, and it's very cheap. I plant the plants directly into the scoria, and add some little caves and woods to make the habitat more natural for the fish. To build the filter, I'm using my bog in a barrel design. Basically, I take an old olive drum or similar container. You can use any type of container that will support the weight of the water and it's watertight. This pond only has small fish and I won't be feeding them very much, if anything. So my filter's sized at 10% of the pond's volume. If you wanted to create a filter for turtles or koi, the filter needs to be bigger. I have created a free calculator over on my website, ozponds.com, that will help you size the filter and the pump required, so I'll put a link to that in the description. For the olive barrel, I just cut the top off with a handsaw. I then create two holes in the barrel. One is where the water will overflow back into the pond, and one is at the base of the filter. And this has a valve so that the filter can easily be drained and flushed. To drill the holes, you use a hole saw, and then to create a watertight seal for the pipes, you use a uni seal. I'll put some links in the description. The overflow, or return to the pond pipe, should be larger than the pipe that will bring water into the pond. This is because when the pump pumps the water into the filter, it's under pressure, but when it returns to the pond, it isn't under any force, just gravity. And the pipe from the pump to the filter comes in over the top and I add a T-piece that is exposed to the air. It's higher than the water level inside the filter. By having this hole that can suck in air, it prevents the filter from emptying if the pump shuts off. I recently made a more in-depth video on the importance of this breather hole, so I'll put a link to that video in the description. The pipe from the pump goes all the way down to the base of the filter. The filter's filled with different size rock and pebble, larger at the bottom, getting smaller as it moves up the filter. The varying sizes will help keep larger, heavier solid materials trapped in the base of the filter. The rock and pebble also provides heaps of surface area for beneficial bacteria. These bacteria process nitrogen and phosphate. This helps you achieve clean, clear, healthy water very easily. The more surface area inside the pond and the filter, the better. That creates more potential to grow these good bacteria and that means more filtering capability. Therefore the substrate, the walls of the pond, the plants, even the pipework are all providing surface area for the bacteria. The beauty of the dedicated bog filter is that you size it so that even without plants or substrate 
you should end up with crystal clear healthy water. And remember you can use that free calculator over at ozponds.com. But like I said, there's lots of ways water can be filtered. This is just a method that I find gives super consistent results. Anyway, back to the construction. If you can, you want to create a void area at the base of the filter, because this is where lots of gunk will accumulate, and on this filter I use some old drainage pipe. Then I covered it with some larger rock, even a few old bricks, and capped it off with the same scoria as I used for the substrate. I then rinsed it all off till the water coming out of the clean out point was clean. To connect the pump to the filter, I used flexible hose. Basically you just need to get water from the pond to your filter. I'll link another video that talks about how to plumb up the filter. There's a few different ways depending on the types of pipe that you use. On this pond I had a PVC socket that fit the flexible pipe I was using perfectly. When positioning the pump make sure it sits off the bottom of the pond. Placing the pump on the very bottom is a risk as if there's a leak in the filter or the plumbing line the pump could potentially pump the pond dry. A question I get a lot is how do you stop the pump from becoming clogged? And I have a few different methods and I made a video explaining them so I'll link that down in the description as well. So basically the bog filter's job is to provide plenty of growing zones for beneficial bacteria and microbes. The bacteria and microbes clean the water keeping it clean, clear and healthy. This is why the size of the filter is important if you don't have enough bacteria, the pond clarity will suffer, and I like having clear water. So this was how the pond looked a few weeks after setting it up. But even with good filtration and plenty of plants, new ponds do take a while to settle. This pond grew plenty of algae as it matured. The algae isn't all bad, and it can actually be very beneficial to your filtration. I like creating ecosystems, and algae is part of any aquatic ecosystem. It can react very quickly to changing water parameters and provides free food to fish and beneficial organisms. I'll throw another video on the benefits of algae down in the description. But this pond is now a beautiful underwater oasis. The water is clear, the fish are breeding, there's plenty of tadpoles, shrimp and snails. And I know on this pond the filter looks ugly as it's very visible. But I have purposely not hidden this one so I can show people how it works. This pond here uses the exact same filter and if you want to see how it was built I'll link that video in the description also. Or maybe you want to create something even bigger and the same principles work on any size pond but the way you construct it may change. For example on this pond I created the bog filter inside the stream. Whereas this pond has two large bog filters that are keeping the water clean, clear and healthy. These larger bog filters were constructed with pond liner and they blend into the landscape. And if you want to see how any of my ponds were constructed, there are playlists and I'll put the links in the description. And don't forget the free calculator I mentioned over on the website. And if you want to create something a bit more unique and awesome, I have a downloadable PDF that contains all the formulas I use when I'm designing and building my ponds. But anyway, I hope this video and the resources that I've linked are helpful. Thanks for watching. See ya.